Hello everyone and welcome back to another episode of the internet's absolute favorite series within the planner community called Is It For You? And as you can tell by the title today, we are going to be discussing the ring planner and more importantly, the minimalist setup within the ring planner and the binder and all of that stuff. So we're, we're really asking ourselves the question, is it the right product for me? Is this right for me? And I'm going to give a few scenarios. So instead of giving you a full review of the actual product, the pros and the cons and all of that fun stuff and the specs, I thought that I would actually just more focus on if you're within the scenario, um, within your planner journey or how your planner style, you might more than likely enjoy this planner setup and if and i'm also going to let you know who it's absolutely not for now if you wanted to skip ahead and kind of see who is it really for and who is it not for feel free to use this time the timestamp in the description because we're going to be marking it all up and without further ado let's just let's just get started now if you love videos just like this one and you love the planning community and you love stationery and planners and all of that stuff consider subscribing if you haven't had a chance yet because we talk a few times a week on this channel and we kind of dive into everything but the whole idea behind this channel is for us to kind of figure out how to kind of use the things that we have with the most meaning with the most intention so that we're not just kind of buying the things and then it's collecting dust but we find a way to actually utilize the tools that we've invested our money in okay so first and foremost um the number one thing that i wanted to kind of mention if it's for you when it comes to ring bound planner is one of the number one things that we absolutely absolutely love about the ring bound planner is it the name suggests the ring, which means you can take things out, you can put them back in. It sounds glaringly obvious, and I even feel silly even mentioning this, but the thing is that that's one of the number one things that most of us love about this system is that we can overload it with the things that we want, or we can kind of take out anything that just feels kind of useless or redundant or repetitive. So we literally just have the bare bone essentials within the planner that we actually need, which also means that we can kind of switch things out as far as the decor is concerned. But the main thing that most of us end up doing is just kind of adding in the things that are most essential and we're removing them the moment that we are finished with it. And that makes it so versatile and so flexible that we absolutely fall in love with this whole thing because it's never quite the same each month. Whereas you might find that with some of your other planner systems, it, it becomes really repetitive, mainly because things don't really change. They don't really shift all that much. They kind of remain relatively constant the same all the time. Now, the number one thing, now the number two thing that you may find that if it's for you is the fact that, that which I also just mentioned a moment ago, is that it's versatile. So what do I really mean by that? Well, sometimes you might just end up adding in inserts that really, that really speak to you. And then other times you might really, it gives you the flexibility. So it gives you the flexibility to add or to take away any of the inserts that are really not working for you. So I'm not just necessarily talking about the decor that it gives you the ability to kind of switch them out, but it also allows you to kind of do the exact same thing with the inserts. So I just recently added like a full finance bundle here. Um, which kind of, it became obvious for me that those would be some of the answers that I would end up utilizing. It allows me to kind of track back specifically within the finance bundle to see how things are going and then just remove the part that are really not all that relevant. And same thing with the monthlies. Uh, with the monthlies, it allows me to not only set specific goals, so it's very, very structured which kind of makes it very functional. And I think that that's another thing that if you love, if you love functionality and you love a sense of structure that keep things to the bare bone basics, you will absolutely love this system. Now let's talk about the decor moving into that right now. So when it comes to decorations and things like that, I think most of us would agree that most of us love keeping it fairly simple and fairly clean and easy to understand. There really isn't a lot of 
overload. At least I haven't personally seen it within the community. When it comes to ring bomb planners and inserts where you would just see like all of your days and things just being flooded. You would see them highlighted, but even when it comes to icons and stickers and things like that, for the most part, it's kept fairly to the minimum. I mean, sometimes I do end up adding a few pieces here and there, but I definitely don't feel the need to add like the washi tape and then a sticker and then, you know, the press on stickers and all of that extra things that we kind of have access to that makes, it makes things both fun and also slightly distracting. So you need to kind of find yourself where you're at within within that realm. Are you finding that it's distracting away from the actual plans? Or is it something that it just kind of adds an element of fun to your planning setup? And it's not to say that you wouldn't have, that you wouldn't necessarily add the core pieces when it comes to this, but that's not if that's not the main thing that you're after, you would absolutely love this system. You would also love this if you love change. And I think that a lot of us kind of struggle when it comes to that because we do love a sense of consistency and predictability, but then at the same time, we also love to kind of change things up. And this system gives you that 100%. So yes, on one hand, yes, you can have dailies in here. You can have the line paper in here. I don't have too many inserts in here because primarily I end up using this mainly for work. So. I don't really keep too many things in here. I keep things here about finances and I keep things here about just like the general agenda. But beyond that, I don't overload this with too many inserts. I used to, um, I mean, but, but here's the beauty thing. Like here's the beauty of it all. If I really wanted to, I can add the trackers. I can add mental health inserts. I did leave a couple of these in here just so that I can kind of come back to them and use them as I need to. But the beautiful thing is that it gives you that flexibility to be able to do that if that's what you need. So if you need something that kind of supports your mental health and something that kind of keeps you accountable, there's numerous, like, like the amount of inserts that you can get really is almost limitless because you can get as specific as you want when it comes to business planning. You can get as specific as you want when it comes to, you know, managing mental health, or you can keep it as basic as just some simple line paper and then you can use it as you need it. Now this is also going to be for you if you are set up with any form of subscription boxes. So as of the recording of this video, uh, currently the one that is the most popular one is cloth and paper. It's not to say that it's the only one. May Paper Co. has had their sh fair share of subscription boxes. And I'm sure that if I'm doing a little bit more digging, a little bit more research, that I'm going to find other minimalist planner subscription boxes as well that you would be able to utilize when it comes to that. Even if there's no subscription boxes, if you love um, supporting Etsy shops with minimalist planner inserts or let's go even one step further, you love creating your own insert on Canva, then you would love this because a lot of those inserts that you can create for the ringbound planner systems don't necessarily translate all that well in like, let's say a book bound system. It's not to say that you couldn't make it work, but it's just when you're, when we're looking at like the most seamless setup, then this, in my opinion, would be it. Now, whether we're looking at a ring bound system or we're looking at a disc planner, I'm kind of talking about the exact same thing. So the details of like the actual structure of your planner does not matter or the size for that matter. It does not matter nearly as much as the actual template, the actual structure of the planner itself, which means that you will have inserts, they will get switched out. You will have these things, the dividers, and you will have some dashboards and you might even add in some vellum here and there. But for the most part, you really love like the little layering, some cute little memo pads and really the card holders with the journaling cards. And like that's, you know, and the Ollie clip, of course, that's your life. So you would really, really enjoy this because even when it comes to decor pieces, it's kept fairly minimal and it's really elegant and clean and easy to understand. It does not go into kawaii style. 
decor it does not really go into it does not really touch that because that's not it's not its main style oh and you would probably also really really love this um, I just briefly wanted to mention um, you would really love this if you love pens and pens and pens so if you love just if you love the uni pens, you would love this. If you love Muji pens, you would absolutely love this. And if you if you love the Muji pens that comes in multitude of colors, you would absolutely love this. If you love the Jetstream Energel from Penta, or this is also from Uni, you would probably really love this. And if you love color coordinating with either the Uni pens, or if you love color coordinating with any of the Uni Emmet pens, you would 100% truly and thoroughly enjoyed this because it's more about just clean and minimalist and elegant lines versus really bold highlights and really bold stickers. So these are, these are just some of the common tools that really ends up being used within this planner setup. And it's, it's simple. It's not, it doesn't, oh, and of course, you know, sometimes you end up using the um, the Tombow pens as an honorable mention. I personally don't use them very often because I don't have a large collection anymore, but you know, those are like the most common highlighters and common ways of creating a key within the system. Now that we've covered all of the beautiful things about this planner, let's actually just spend a moment talk about who it's absolutely not for. And it's not to say, again, I'm, it's just a quick disclaimer, it's not to say that you couldn't make it work, but it's to say that it's not the most ideal thing for you. It's not going to be for you if, if you're a one book girly. If you need something book bound like this, that is bound in one book and you can just scroll back to the week or to the day or to the week or to the month and you want to find something specific. And mainly because here, the very thing that makes this awesome is that when we're done with this month, we can remove it and you may do as you wish with it. You may find that you end up archiving it or you end up throwing it out or you discard it, whatever you end up doing with it, but there's a good chance that you might not be able to find this insert again. Um, unless you have like a really specific way of archiving it. If you're a one book bound girly, you will probably love this because it's everything is in one booklet. You might not love this as much as you really, really want to, even if everything else is really working for you. If you really, really love fountain pens, if pens are your thing and you, you love the fountain pens, you found the fountain, you love the fountain pen inks, or simply you have an issue with, you know, using the uni pens, using gel pens, using ballpoint pens, because they either skip or your writing style just puts the pen in an angle where it ends up skipping. And, it, and I'm specifically talking to you left-handers because honestly, if you're a lefty, you know that you're going to be holding your pen a slightly differently. And even though I bought some of the most popular pens that are like super hyped up, they do end up working for me for a little while and then after that they don't. And it's not to say that they are not good pens, but it's to say, hang on. Okay, so like the whole fountain pen thing, it's one of those things where it's more of a preference thing, but then it's also, it depends on your writing style and what you actually prefer that will kind of determine not only what planner you end up with, but also sort of which direction we're going to kind of go with everything. It's also not going to be for you if you absolutely hate throwing these inserts out. So if you have a really difficult time letting go of this, which kind of goes back to my first point at the very beginning of this video where we were talking about how do you know if it's for you well if you hate throwing these inserts out and you really have a difficult time figuring out an archival system that really works and your preference would be to have everything in one place for one year so you can kind of revisit it reminisce whatever works then you might not enjoy this and it's not to say again that you couldn't make it work you probably could but it's just, it's not going to be the most ideal. Part of you will probably still go through this whole thing of ugh, where do I keep this? And also how can I revisit a certain month? 
so at least keep in mind these are just my my opinions but i mean for me that was actually one of the deal breakers when it comes to even like trying to archive this versus any other systems that i've used in the past it just it, it's not the most convenient next up is then that same point so if you hate throwing out the inserts or you end up getting the cloth and paper and i know a lot of you fall into this category so don't lie if you have your cloth and paper sub box and you have like a million of different inserts that you just really have no use for it well for one we would need to really evaluate if that sub box is still, still the right decision for you but then also are you really utilizing it in the best possible way that it was intended for because if you end up getting this planner and you end up just putting in just some basic inserts like your weekly your month and uh, and your overview and then from there you're sort of sitting there like okay um like i have a separate journal so i'm not going to need journaling inserts here i'm already tracking in a in a separate planner i'm already tracking you know my habits um, i have a separate planner for my mental health for my health in general for memory keeping so i really don't need extra journal inserts in here so if that's the case when you're finding yourself that things start to repeat things are starting to duplicate and you're feeling like you're kind of repeating yourself in the process, then you might find that this system might eventually, you might find that this system might not be the most ideal for you because then you're duplicating certain information. So again, like that kind of goes back to what I initially said at the very beginning of this series where intention matters, figuring out like what you really want the planner for, it really does matter because eventually as you start using it, and interacting with the product, you're going to feel a sense of resentment and regret because you weren't clear and honest with yourself at the very beginning of what you wanted to use this for. Like, I'm pretty clear of what this is for. This is mainly for work and for work-related anything and a little bit of social media. So I'm not trying to do memory keeping here and I'm not trying to, you know, I'm not trying to add any other information in there that is really not necessary everything else can go into my hobo weeks so i think that that's more of a conversation about okay um are you actually going to be utilizing this for the thing that it was intended for and it's not to say that you couldn't change and evolve and change your mind but it's if you want to avoid the sense of regret of like oh, why did i waste so much money on it Be because between the cover and the inserts and the dashboards and the journaling cards it does get quite pricey for what you pay for like could you get away with just a notebook you know so it's just it's it's having that honest conversation with yourself and really figuring out what you want to use it for and it's also not going to be for you now this again this is just my experience it's not going to be for you in my opinion if you utilize more journaling supplies to to decorate versus utilizing like the minimalist planner stuff what do i mean by that i'm so glad you asked so this whole spread almost entirely consists of of a minimalist planner supplies so like the little circle the little dot the corner sticker the little icons this this literally resembles like you know like the little filming and the youtube icon and all of that the only thing that could potentially be called like almost like a journaling supply would be like the little flower here and a little flower here beyond that everything here is cohesive to a minimalist uh planner like accessory so that would be something to kind of highlight things that would be something to like add the icons but these are all very minimalist looking icons if that's not your jam first of all, or if you don't want to invest in that if your jam is more like the super colorful dots and like the the little girl and like all of the little japanese stationery that you can get your hands on like the really fun washies um the small little icons could you make it work in this yes does it mesh cohesively maybe not it will look odd because this style is different than this style so again it's just it's the same as could i use my fountain pen in on this paper of course i can is it is the writing experience the most ideal 
No, it really isn't. And every single time I try, I kind of hate the experience, you know? Just the same way, could I use the Muji pen in the hobo? Yes. Is it the best experience? Like, do I have a preference to use this over my fountain pen? No, I don't. Like, will I use it sometimes? Yeah, of course, but it's not my, it's not my first choice. So the whole journaling supplies thing, I just kind of need you to be aware that, you know, like the larger dots, these dots, so the dots that you can get this, you can get at like a fraction of a price from, uh, from Amazon, it comes in like multitude of colors. If you love the washi tapes, if you love the small little icons from Midori, if you love, you know, Eve, you can get away with this one. This one is from, I believe, Swatelier. It's Swatelier or Midori, but these are really cute. Sometimes I end up using them, but for the most part, I try to just kind of stick to, um, I try to stick to stuff that I get from like I wouldn't, I wouldn't decorate this the same way that I would decorate this. Even, even on, even on the monthlies. Like I wouldn't use some of these press on stickers because it just, it doesn't really make much sense to me. Um, I'm trying to show you. I wouldn't use some of these washi tapes. I wouldn't use some of these bigger stickers. Um, I would use these types of, um, it's almost like a, a washi tape, like sticker roll. I wouldn't use them here in this minimalist planner. It just, it really doesn't make any sense to me. You know what I mean? Like the, the PET tapes, like I, I end up not using it. C could I make it work? Yeah, I could. To me, it doesn't make sense, right? So again, like you just kind of want to be really clear about your own uh, journaling and planning style. Just like the same way that I really wouldn't, like I have like a whole bunch of different fun little kits from from Hubman and Chup Girl. Most of these really, you know what I mean? Like super cute. It doesn't, it doesn't really jive with this type of planner. Could I use some of these stickers? Yes, but it would look kind of weird. So it's sort of like when you have like those sticker sets for like Erin Condren and then you're trying to use them in a different planner um, setup. Like the aesthetic here is very like less but better. Like even when I'm using a highlighter, even that feels like too much sometimes because like that's not, it's not really designed for like overloading it with lots of stickers. You might have like layering of like these circle dots or you might, you might use something like that, like a very minimalist looking like clear like memo pad that that looks kind of cute, but you're not really going to be like, as far as decor is concerned, you're not really going to go crazy with like the different decorations on in this planner because it's not really what it's designed for. It's gonna be one of those things where you need to get really honest with yourself of like how, like what is your journaling and planning style and then get the planner, get the system and get the accessories that kind of match that. Can you utilize what you already have in other systems? You can. I have a hard time kind of utilizing some of my older stickers and journaling stickers because of that, because it, it just doesn't match the aesthetic of my current setup. So it just kind of keep that in mind. You might feel totally differently about it. I get kind of weirded out about that. So I mean, like everybody's a little bit different when it comes to that, but I like it when things kind of work cohesively together with like the neutral colors and using the proper like thin little pen. And then it, it creates that the aesthetic that I'm actually after. So just kind of keep that in mind, but this, this is sort of like lump sum of like, is this the right fit for you? I think that this is a wonderful planner setup. Uh, as long as you're kind of clear about how you're going to use it. What I've seen happen is that there is like a lot of overlay and a lot of mixing and matching and then you end up, basically what you want to avoid, I guess, is to have like that crossover when you're trying to have one system do too many things for you. And as long as you don't do that, then I think you should be good and you would probably really enjoy it and you would probably really like it because it's beautiful, it's very functional, it keeps you on track, even, you know, you can get really cool accessories that makes it look elegant, it feels grown up. So like in a lot of ways, it works for a lot of us because we, especially if you're coming from like the bullet journaling community or if you're, or if you're coming from, you know, uh, having like the Erin Condren planners, happy planners, where it, it like the 
the culture that is created there, it's a very heavy handed with the accessories, very heavy handed with, with the stickers and with the decoration. So a lot of us, when we move into something like this, it feels like a breath of fresh air and it feels very elegant and functional. And so like, I think that does the draw for most of us when it comes to this. And, um, and when it doesn't match that, or when, when you're trying to kind of go after like a certain aesthetic, then yeah, like you can use like small little things here and there to kind of make it cute and whatever, but that's not really the, the point. The point is for you to kind of figure out how to use this the most functional way so that it actually serves the purpose that you intended for. Anyway, this is enough rambling for today. I hope that you have enjoyed this video. If you did, Obviously you can support the channel by subscribing and hitting the notification bell so you actually get notified. We are shooting for creating more of a regular schedule now that my life is kind of becoming a little bit more normalized again. Uh, the last like two weeks or so has just been an absolute like mayhem. And so you haven't really seen like a regular upload from me because of that, but we are, we are getting there and we are doing our best to kind of take care of ourselves and making sure that, you know, when I do show up, I do show up for you fully. So um, we're shooting for a Tuesday upload, a Thursday upload, and potentially in the next year, we can kind of move into having a weekend upload as well. If you guys are interested, let me know in the comment below if you would love to see like more, I would love to bring back like more of the vlog episodes, a little bit more casual style. But in the meanwhile, we're shooting for at least two videos a week. This is all I have. I hope that you have enjoyed this. Let me know in the comment section below what is your absolute favorite thing about a Ringbound Planner if you do have one so that the community can also benefit from your wisdom as well, not just from mine. And thanks so much for watching. You guys, I so appreciate you hanging out with me week after week. It really does mean the world to me. Enjoy the rest of your day. I hope you have a beautiful one and I cannot wait to see you guys in my next one. Bye.